Hey there, welcome to this tutorial on Absentia DX. We're diving into one of our latest features, Transcribe. It's a powerful tool that extracts the dialogues from your sound rushes and places them in a spreadsheet. This feature has some great applications throughout the sound post-production process, as we'll soon discover. When you pair this transcription with Alts Finder, it makes life a breeze for dialogue editors and supervisors. They can easily search for alternative takes, fill with breaths and efforts, recut ADR, and so much more, all quickly and efficiently. Let's explore it together. First up, the essential step is to drag and drop the dailies folder right into Absentia DX, ensuring that you've got the transcribe tool enabled. Now a quick heads up, this process may take a bit of time and the duration will depend on your chosen settings. Don't worry. We'll let this operation run its course while I walk you through each setting. That way, you can pick the configuration that suits your workflow best. Start by choosing the language for your dialogues. Then you've got two ways to create your spreadsheet. I personally prefer the project option as it compiles all the transcriptions from every sound file in your dailies folder into one handy spreadsheet. Alternatively, you can go with the WAV file option which generates a separate spreadsheet for each WAV file in your folder. Now let's talk about the next setting, the meta channel. Meta here stands for metadata. If you select a source channel, the transcription will be embedded in the metadata of each WAV file. For instance, if you pick channel one, all of the transcription from that channel will be embedded in the WAV files metadata. This used to be quite handy before the Alts Finder tool came along especially when users were searching for alternative takes in programs like SoundMiner. With all the text indexed in the WAV files, they could easily search for specific lines or words there. But now we have Alts Finder, which does a fantastic job of searching, previewing, and spotting alternative takes, so there's no need now to embed the transcription on the sound rolls. Now metadata still can come in handy in other workflows and applications. For instance, when you're editing a voiceover in Adobe Audition, having the transcription displayed above the waveforms can be valuable for some editors. It provides context and makes the editing process more efficient and streamlined. Okay, so if you choose off, it won't embed the transcription in the wave files. It will just create the spreadsheet. This will significantly speed up the transcription process. Last but not least, let's wrap it up by selecting the source channel for the transcription that's going into the spreadsheet. You've got a choice. You can either pick a single channel or go for all channels. If you're in a hurry and need transcription pronto, selecting all channels might not be the best bet since Transcribe will go through each channel of the poly file and that can take some time. Personally, I usually opt for the mono mix channel as my source. It ensures the fastest transcription. But there are some important considerations to keep in mind, which we'll dig into shortly when we delve into Alts Finder. A common question we often receive relates to using Transcribe on an Intel machine. Here's the deal. Transcribe is a resource-intensive process optimized for silicon processors, so it can be quite sluggish on Intel machines, rendering it impractical. But don't worry if you're working on an Intel-powered device for post-production. There's a workaround. You can run Transcribe on a different machine, like an M1 laptop or a Mini, and then use that transcription with Alts Finder in your editing room. The key is to edit the file paths on the spreadsheet to make it work seamlessly. Let me walk you through the process. In this example, let's say I processed the sound rolls in a folder deep within my computer. Now I'm moving that folder to the desktop, which is the same as moving it to another computer. The catch is that the spreadsheet is still pointing to the old file path. So naturally, Alts Finder throws an error. To fix this, I'll open the spreadsheet and update the file path using the find and replace function. Simple as that. So just copy the original path and replace it with the new path on the desktop. This simple swap ensures that your database is correctly connected to the new location. After I'm done, I'll save the file. But here's a crucial step. Before adding the newly edited database, I need to clear the current one to avoid any confusion or chaos. Dropping the new database now. Add action. 
You're not thinking. Ethics professor. Theory. I just killed my ethics professor. As you can see, the previews are working, indicating that the database is now connected to the new path. I mentioned earlier that transcribing only the mix channel has some advantages, but also one disadvantage. Let's dive into it. On my screen, you can see the transcription for all channels on the left and the mono mix transcription on the right. I filtered the results to show the line, I woke up next to his dead body. Now, the advantage of having just the mono mix is evident. It's easy to quickly see how many takes have that line. The scene and take information are clear, making it a straightforward process. However, looking at the left transcription, you can see it's a bit trickier since there are multiple microphones capturing the same line. Now, let's explore the difference in previewing using AltsFinder. I'll drop the single channel database and search for the line, dude, relax. Let's see how it compares. Once again, visually, the results from the mono mix are superior. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. Previewing them is also faster because I can scroll through each of the different takes seamlessly. However, there's one disadvantage worth noting, especially in Alt's Finder previews. Since I transcribed only the mono mix channel, I can only listen to that channel here, not the specific actor's lab. No need to worry though, I can still spot it to Pro Tools and then swap the mono mix with the lav. We'll explore this further when discussing the spot options. Let me clear this database now and load the all channels database. We'll search for the same line. Naturally, it may seem more visually confusing, but the advantage here is that I can preview the line on each of the microphones. In this case, Randall is the character speaking that line. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. It's also worth mentioning that having multiple microphones can result in unnecessary information, like the line coming through another actor's lav, leading to confusion. Dude, relax. Dude, relax. <clears throat> Dude, relax. It's essential to weigh the pros and cons to find the best approach based on your specific editing needs. From here, I could spot the lav mic directly into Pro Tools. Let me walk you through the spotting options now. Alts Finder provides two options for spotting results in Pro Tools. Pressing the O key will spot the clip, referencing the original. Let me demonstrate how it works. In this dialogue cutting session, I've marked a couple of spots that need an alternative take. Professor Benson! Professor, hello! It's clear to me. Why were you here? It's clear to me. This particular line requires more clarity. So I'll load the mono mix database in Alts Finder and search for looks clear to me. 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 All right, the first one sounds good. Clicking the O key now will spot it directly into Pro Tools. Let me put it in sync. Looks clear to me. There we go, that's better. Since this clip is referencing the original sound roll, it contains all the channels of the polywave and also full handles. Right click and you'll see the other channels in matching alternates. If you're using Pro Tools Ultimate, you can also activate the field recording function on the track and it will show the channel name of each track. But here's an even faster way to switch channels with a shortcut. Pressing Command plus Option and the up-down arrows will toggle through the channels of the poly. Professor, hello! Looks clear to me. That sound much better. So, as you see, cutting alts is a pretty straightforward process. The other spotting option is to use the S key. This option exports a new clip into the Pro Tools Audio Files folder and timeline. The clip contains only the channel that Alts Finder is showing, and it cannot be swapped in Pro Tools. So naturally, to use this spotting, I need the All Channels transcription. I already loaded it and searched for the same line. Now you can see Randall's microphone in the results. Let's go ahead and choose a take to spot. Looks clear to me. 
Looks clear to me. Looks clear to me. Let's export this one. I type the S, and the clip is exported to the timeline. Clear to me. All right, as you can see, there are no other channels available in this clip. This is a newly created audio file. It still retains the original metadata, as evidenced by the channel name, scene, and take information. However, it doesn't reference the original role. Also, it's worth noting that the exported clip has a fixed handle value of 3 seconds. So that's a wrap for the spotting options. And this is my preference for the settings. Personally, I lean towards the mono mix transcription and the O key spotting. It provides the quickest processing time and offers flexibility when spotting into Pro Tools. As mentioned earlier, Transcribe is also highly useful when cutting ADR, or when you need to add breaths and expressions for an actor. To begin, you'll want to process all the ADR and loop group recordings from your show, or you can even use recordings from your past shows. I've already done that and created this database. If I scroll down the spreadsheet, you can see that these expressions are marked with brackets. So, this database can be incredibly handy for filling a scene with grunts, breaths, or any other expression. Let me show you. <laughs> See how quickly I can find all these expressions coming from the ADR and loop group recordings? This is something that would be very time consuming without Transcribe and Alts Finder. Transcribing the ADR and loop group is also beneficial when cutting a last minute line change or even a single word with no time to call the actor into the stage. If you're lucky, you might find that word or line in another episode or season of the show. Hey, you could even use Transcribe to look for specific PFX. Let me show you. I'm dropping the Sound Rolls database again, and Alts Finder will merge it with the ADR database loaded before. If I search for door, check out all the results I get. How about footsteps now? Transcribe and Alts Finder can be incredibly useful in various situations. I've aimed to cover every aspect in this tutorial, highlighting its immense potential and versatility across different workflows. I hope you find this tutorial valuable and thanks a lot for watching.